Hi there, welcome to uh, Encouraging Word. My name is Dave Finley and I'm from Killarney, Manitoba. It's warming up here in Killarney. So glad that you've joined us today for this Encouraging Word from the Bible. Uh, sorry I'm a few minutes late. Um, yesterday I talked about God seeing us always, always being on display before God and uh, how God will sometimes hold us account, will always hold us accountable for the things that we, we've done. And um, <clears throat> in talking about that, I tended to forget and neglect reminding you as well that God doesn't only see the negative things, but he sees the good things. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 4, that your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. And um, we are reminded that God just doesn't look for the bad stuff that we do. God is, wants to bless and wants to reward us. So I need to remind you of that. It's a secret. Uh, some people don't get it, but God says he's looking. He's keeping an eye on us. The Bible says in uh, Chronicles that his eye is looking for those who put their trust in him so that he can prove himself strong on our behalf. And so I want to encourage you to um, know that God... Uh, is looking for you. God wants to pour out his blessings in your life. Um, have you ever heard the phrase, God moves in mysterious ways? Um, that is not found in the Bible. That's uh, from a hymn that was written by William Cowper a way long time back in about the 1700s. And uh, uh, Cowper had an interesting story, and I thought I would read it for you. This is a little different than normal, what we do here uh, with Encouraging Word, but maybe this may be encouraging to you. Late one stormy London night in 1763, a broken man was determined to end his life. He hired a coach, a taxi, to take him to the river. Only when he cast himself into the Th Thames River and drowned, he thought, would his agonizing trials finally end. He was unwavering in his resolve. He stepped down from the coach and walked along the fog towards the river's edge. And when he reached the shore, um, he noticed a strange man sitting there as staring at him as if on guard. Moreover, despite the rainfall, the tides were low, too low to drown a man. Returning home, the desperate man decided to poison himself with an overdose of laudanum, a potent drug derived from opium. But he couldn't raise the bottle to his lips. He tried again and again. Each time it was as if it was an invisible hand was pushing it away. Finally, he tried to hang himself. The rope snapped, and as a housekeeper rushed in, responding to the noise, the man gave up. For reasons he could not conceive, the life that brought such despair and misery could not be ended. That man was William Cowper, a famous English poet. It had not been the first time that he had contemplated suicide, only to be held back by forces greater than himself. Four years after this dark evening in London, he sought a fresh start, and he moved to the town of Olney in Buckinghamshire, there he met another man who had witnessed God's grace at a moment of great desperation. That man was John Newton, a celebrated Anglican preacher. Um, he had been appointed to serve in the town of Olney, and Newton earned such a reputation uh, for the power of his preaching and the depth of his conviction that people who needed guidance and hope, like Cowper uh, moved to the town in order to sit under Newton's ministry. Cowper apparently took residence in a house next door to where Newton lived and developed a peace uh, and a relationship with Newton. Uh, they began to fellowship together, care for one another. Newton understood that for the fragile poet, uh, for his mind to find peace, writing might help in the recovery. And so he encouraged Cowper to start writing hymns. And um, so the two collaborated and they actually wrote over 350 uh, works together, hymns together. Um, of course, in the hundreds of years since then, countless people have been ha have found comfort in the, the hymns that they wrote. One of the best known or the best known song written by John Newton, of course, was Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. Um, 
Newton was the one who was saved at sea and found God's grace reached out to him. Cowper, he composed a hymn that was titled Light Shining Out of Darkness. Uh, and it was about the hidden workings of the world that prevented his suicide and led him against all odds to this town of Olney where he had a fresh start and met with God. And the, the, the song started with the familiar words that we've heard, God moves in mysterious ways. And uh, it's quite an amazing, um, amazing thing. Um, although it's not in the Bible, we do recognize that God does things that we don't always understand. In fact, in John chapter 13, verse 7, Jesus is with his disciples and he says to them, you do not realize what I am now doing, but later you will understand. If we go back to the story that we've been talking about for the last number of weeks, the story of Jesus turning water into wine, doesn't make sense what Jesus did. Nothing made sense that day. Um, telling the servants to fill water pots with water and take some out and give it to the master of the feast, nothing made sense. They didn't understand what he was doing. Later on, they understood. There are times in your life where you're not going to understand what God's doing. And it'll only be later on down the road where uh, God will reveal to you the significance of what he was doing and why he was doing it, perhaps. And so we just need to be reminded. I just want to encourage you today. God's at work in your life. The Bible says that he who created or began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. God's not going to leave you hanging. Uh, he's going to finish the work that he started in you. I just want to encourage you in that today. Um, God finishes what he starts. And that means he's going to cont continue working in your life. I trust that this is encouragement to you. Let's bow together in prayer. Father, we don't always understand what you're doing or why, but Lord, we put our trust in you, knowing that you care for us, knowing that you love us, knowing that your ways are better than our ways, your ways are higher than our ways. And so we put our trust in you, knowing that uh, what you do and what, you be, what you've begun to do in our lives, you will carry it on to completion. So I thank you for those uh, people today, individuals perhaps, who are just struggling right now, wondering what in the world you're doing or why you're doing it. Father, may we have a sense of peace knowing that you're in control, knowing that you are aware, knowing that you fully know what you're doing. And so we pray, God, that we can have a peace and just uh, settle in to trust in you and believe in you and uh, doing the things you tell us to do, even though they don't always make sense. So I thank you for your word today. Thank you for your people. And I pray your blessing upon them today. May this be a day of encouragement. May this be a day of hope. May this be a day when some of the clouds of mystery are parted and we see that God is actively involved. In your name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for watching. A little different today. Um, encouraging word, but I trust it has been encouraging to you. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow for another end of the week um, uh, session. And we're, we're looking forward to seeing you. God bless you. Have a great day.